Hi everyone, in this video we'll prepare a multi-step income statement. I have a list of accounts and their account balances on the screen and there are some thrown into the mix that will not be included in the income statement. So one of the first things that you have to identify is which accounts will go to this statement, which will not go. You probably remember, hopefully you do, that your revenue and expense accounts all show up on the income statement. So statement uh, accounts like, let me go to the home screen here, accounts like this, your common stock, let me just put them in a different color. This will not, the common stock shows up on your balance sheet. We have expense, expense, yes, expense, revenue, accounts receivable will not go to your income statement, depreciation, yes interest expense, cash, no, that also goes to your balance sheet, um, accounts payable, will not. So when you have um, perhaps a problem like this, this is one of the first things you're going to do is kind of work down through your accounts and see if you have accounts listed there that should not be included in your income statement and then just, uh, you know, notate them some way. And so for dividends, I've marked that one through as well. Notice at the bottom of the screen, we're going to prepare a multi-step income statement, and then we're going to actually prepare closing entries for that statement as well. There is a separate video for you leading you through the how to use the income summary account to prepare your closing entries. So I'm not going into a lot of great detail on this video to save you the time and redundancy, but do review that one, and then we're just going to close it and the reason is because we have a new account added on this time the very first one the cost of the goods sold account this is an expense account it is often one of the largest expense accounts for a merchandising type business okay so let's get started so we've identified the accounts to ignore they're in the yellow here and so let's go over to this statement that I've already got prepared so when you are preparing your income statement, you always want to put the heading information. So this was, I think it changed the name of the company. Oh, no, 3E Foods. Okay, this is good. So we have the name of the company. We have the name of the statement, which is the income statement. And it is for a period of time ending. So for this particular statement, it is for the year ended. And I just put 20 and then XX, you just fill in the blanks there. So whatever year you're reviewing this or whatever the current year is, you would just fill in those items. Okay, so now we are preparing a multi-step income statement, which provides more information to the users of the information. So we list our sales revenue. If there are more revenues than sales, then we'll list those differently. It depends on whether they're in the normal operations of the business. But typically, if we're in the business of selling goods, then we're going to have sales revenue. And then notice what we do next. We subtract the cost of the goods that have been sold. And this leaves us with gross profit. So these are very important numbers for businesses to identify and to be able to do some analysis on to see how their numbers are moving around this Excel. Let me spread that out. So this is very important to do. Sales revenue minus cost of the goods sold. That leaves you with gross profit. That is not your net profit. That is the gross profit. And then notice what comes next. We have this area that we will call operating expenses. Operating expenses are those items that are expenses that are incurred in the normal operations of the business. We're going to Further classify those items as selling and administrative. So we have two different headings here now. Remember multi-step as opposed to single step. When we had the single step, we just listed all of the revenues and gains together and then all of the expenses and losses together and you net those and you have your net income. This providing this multi-step income statement provides more information. It's more useful for companies. So now we have to separate out of those expenses. Remember we had this list of these items that are given. We have to decide well what is included in the sales and selling expenses and what would be included in administrative type expenses. So fortunate for us, they're mostly already designed that way. They have the notations out beside them, administrative office, sales office, depreciation expense on the store equipment. 
So that means on the store where you're selling, that's going to be a part of selling expenses. Um, and we'll see that you treat the interest expense differently. I'll show you what to do with that in a few moments. Rent expense on the administrative offices, uh, miscellaneous administrative expenses. So again, these are set out pretty straightforward for us. If you're preparing this in the real world, then you're going to have to analyze these yourself. But you, you would know, you would be able to pick out, okay, what is tied to the sales and what is tied to the administrative offices. You may have insurance on two different areas, one for sales, one for administrative. Rent, again, we see some rent on here separated out. So different uh, different expenses, but in the real world, you would be able to do this. Okay, so under your selling expenses, we have salary, advertising, of course, that would be a part of of selling expenses, depreciation on the store equipment, delivery expense. So this is not your freight in to get the merchandise to you. This is your delivery of those goods that have been sold. So we would include this typically. Add them all together so we get total selling expense and we have a label. Note all of these labels are very important. Operating expenses, then breakout selling expenses, administrative expenses, total selling expenses. In a moment we're going to see that we also have total administrative, so total selling, total administrative here. So labels do matter. And notice the form that I'm using here. I'm just separating these different columns out, not by debit credit. We're finished with debit and credit by the time we're preparing these financial statements. The income statement is the first financial statement you will prepare in the order. So it's just for good form and easy reading. Notice I did begin with a dollar sign. I began this column over on the right hand side that brought my gross profit. I did begin that column with the dollar sign. I did not litter all through here with dollar signs. If you wanted to list uh, the very first expense you could. I typically don't. It looks nice to have an inset and easy to read to show what this total is made up of. Same thing for your administrative, so we have salary for administrative, rent, miscellaneous, total all those together. Now the next call, the next area, and I've also done some spacing, skip spacing, just to make it easy to read too. When you're preparing this, say for an assignment, you might not have the luxury of a lot of space, so do what you need to, but do make sure you provide all of these labels. So now we have the total operating expenses. So to total operating expenses is made up of the combined total of selling expenses plus the total administrative expenses, total operating expenses. Now we get to what's called our operating income. This is before any additional items like um, interest expense, tax expense. So from the gross profit now, gross profit up at the top, remember, the gross profit minus operating expenses will get you to operating income. From there, we have this other category that is for other revenue and expenses. These are items that are not necessarily tied to the operations of the business. Also, we will see interest expense show up down here and income tax expense will usually show up down here as separate line items. Interest and taxes are important numbers to be able to identify, so um, decision makers often look directly for those numbers. This makes it easier for them to identify. Also, interest may not be an ongoing expense, so when we look at operating income, this gives us some good numbers to use for prediction purposes as well. Well, okay, so the interest expense, we're going to subtract. That gets us to our net income. Finally, we're at the end. Dollar sign, double rule, double underline to finish off your statement. So there you have it, your multi-step income statement. From that same set of data, now let's prepare the closing entries. And again, you've got the same set of data as before. I've just gone through and put a line through, kind of did a strike through on the accounts that do not matter so we don't mess up and accidentally pick up one we shouldn't. Dividends will be closed, so notice there's not a strike through there. Okay, follow the same form you're used to. Close your revenue accounts to the income summary account. You'll do this by debiting the sales revenue account, which is right here. So debit sales revenue account, and you will credit the income summary account, income summary account.
This is not an income statement. This is an account, a, an account that is considered a temporary account, and it is used for closing these other temporary accounts. We only use it for closing. Item two, close expense accounts to income summary. So we take the total of all those expenses into the income summary account with a debit, and now we have to list every single expense account. And instead of listing them alphabetically, I've just listed them by the order of how they're listed over my data set over on the left, including the cost of the goods sold. It has a debit balance, so we need to close that account. We're really resetting them. Uh, we're giving them, uh, setting them back to a zero balance by doing this. Okay, so all of these together are closed now. Now, when you do make this entry, you will credit your income summary for 168, and you'll have expenses over on the left for the income summary account. So now we need to close the income summary account. We will close it into retained earnings with a debit to retained earnings for that balance, which, by the way, ends up being exactly the amount of the net income, the profit. And this is where we actually move that profit into retained earnings as well with a credit. And now let's close the fourth entry. We're going to close dividends. We'll do that by debiting retained earnings for the $500. And we will credit dividends for the $500. And that will cause those accounts to go to zero. Again, if you need a little extra review on your journal entries for closing the temporary accounts, please review the other video I have for you out there on YouTube uh, related to closing entries.